This is the video record of the tests that were undertaken to prove the loss of mains operation for G99 compliance on the Kemsley Eon K4 CHP site. The basic concept is that the generators on site cannot feed into a dead bar, which means if the UKPN supply is lost on either side of the common board, that the generator associated with that side of the board is switched off. If both the supplies on Incomer 2A and 1A from UKPN are lost, both the generators have to be desynchronized from the system. If, however, there is only one side Incomer that is opened, but the bus coupler is opened, then the generator associated with that side of the board has to be opened. This is achieved at the 11 kV level with the opening of the generator circuit breakers K4 BAC10 for the GT or K4 BAC20 for the steam turbine. Auxiliary contacts on the three associated circuit breakers for grid 1A, 2A and the bus coupler need to be tested to ensure that they are operating correctly. The wiring has already been checked between the units to make sure the correct signals can be generated but now we have to physically open each of the associated circuit breakers to check that the auxiliary contacts are working correctly. The connections for these auxiliary contacts are at the front of the panels and these have to be disconnected in turn and checked during the breaker operation. These tests need to be undertaken without causing any interruptions to the connected loads. So they will be done by ensuring that at least one incomer and the bus coupler remain closed at every stage of the operation. Firstly, we need to check that 1A, 2A and the bus coupler are in their normal operating conditions that is closed and in service. The first test is on grid 1A, the two sets of auxiliary contacts for that circuit breaker and each set of contacts has a meter connected across to measure continuity. With both meters recording a closed contact, which is correct, we remove ourselves from the substation to issue a switching instruction to UK PN control room. Having confirmed successful opening of the circuit breaker and the operation of the auxiliary contacts, we now remove ourselves from the substation again to issue a switch instruction to close the circuit breaker. The test was successful. Now we move on to proving incomer 2A. Following the reconnection of incomer 1A contacts, we now connect to 2A and perform the test again. Having confirmed now that two A auxiliary contacts have both successfully opened, we can now issue the switch instruction to reclose. This successfully completed the testing for circuit two A. That concluded the testing on this day. Six days later, we returned to do the check on the bus section of the bus coupler auxiliary contacts. Again, we checked that the two incomers were closed and the bus section was closed as we didn't want to disconnect the connected loads on the site. But generation has been shut down for the Christmas outage. So this was the ideal opportunity to check these two contacts. The auxiliary contacts are connected between K301 and 305 and 311 and 315. So again, we connect our multimeters across the auxiliary contacts in continuity mode and record the operation to open the circuit breaker. That'll do. Good. Open. Open. 
Right for it. Uh, it's definitely open. Twelve. Close it. Okay. Section. Go for close, please. This concluded the successful testing of the bus coupler section auxiliary contacts. It's time to check now that the two trip signals for each of the main ST and TT circuits are successfully received at the line differential protection relays at the 33 kV substation. Final connections and links are closed in the marshalling panel that connect these two signals into the protection relay. At the moment, the loss of main signal is received because the links are not closed. Once we close the links, we can reset the protection relay. And the loss of main trip signal has now disappeared. To prove operation, we open the test link up as if the circuit breaker had opened and the loss of main trip signal is successfully received. Now we close the links up on the UKPN backup trip this signal goes high if there's a fault. So at the moment, there's no trip signal received. So we manually operate the UKPN trip relay. Trip relay signal is received from the relay and we reset. Test number five is the same as test four, but this time on the gas turbine line differential relay. At the moment, we've got the loss of main trip signal up because we haven't made the connections into the marshalling panel. Once these connections are made off and the links are closed, it should be possible to reset that signal. So closing the links up, we should be able to reset a loss of mains detection, which it does. We now open the links to make sure the signal is received correctly, which it is. And whilst the links are still open, we try to reset the relay to prove it won't reset, which it doesn't. Finally, reclose the links and reset again. Okay, that's fine. Now we close the links up for the UKPN backup trip, and then remotely close the UKPN trip relay. We should receive the signal when it goes high. which it does. The four trip signals now have to be communicated to the EON site to operate and open the 11 kV generator circuit breakers. This is achieved with the line differential relays where the signals are repeated. The trip signals are sent across the fiber optic network to allow for the extensive distance between the two substations. We now have to repeat the four tests again, triggering them at the 33 kV substation to make sure we successfully receive them here. Right, are you ready? Yes. Yep, so this is gonna be the UKPN trip. Signal received. Okay, can we do the loss of mains trip on the steam turbine, opening those links? Here we go. Signal received. Right, close it. <coughs> yep, it's reset. We'll do the uh, GT now, the UKPN trip. Trip signal received. Okay. Right, we'll reset. Okay, trip signal gone. That just leaves the GT loss of main signal from the Martian cabinet. Loss of main signal received. Okay, put it back. 
Right, we've reset. That now completes the dry testing and now we have to prove the entire system through a wet test where we'll operate the trip signals at the 33 kV substation all the way through the system, through the protection relays, through the communications, all the way down to the circuit breakers 11 kV associated with the steam turbine and the gas turbine. The steam turbine 11 kV circuit breaker has the advantage of a test position. We can first withdraw the circuit breaker to lock off the circuit and bus bar shutters from the system and then reinsert the breaker into its test position and close it ready for testing. This allows us to check all the functions without having the steam turbine in operation. The GT unfortunately has a fixed pattern circuit breaker so we actually have to have the whole plant operating with the generator synchronized and generating at a low power level when we operate the trip signals. Wet test number one, steam turbine backup trip to trip the 11 kV circuit breaker. Yeah, it's open, confirm. Confirm, we've got indication here of UKPN trip and circuit breaker open. Kasim, what have your messages have you got up? Okay, that's good. Kev, can you uh, reset the breaker? Close it again, please. Yeah, close it. Yeah, because in place of the signals, means you have scattered. Close. Following this successful test, we reset the latch on the line differential relay and move on to wet test number two, which is the loss of mains trip to the 11 kV steam turbine circuit breaker. As you can see, the alarm came up and the circuit breaker tripped. The third test is the UKPN trip to the GT 11 kV circuit breaker. The LEDs show that the UKPN trip signal has been received and the circuit breaker is now open. Final wet test was to prove the loss of mains and we activated the loss of mains and got the circuit breaker open signal in return. This successfully completed all of the G99 loss of mains and UKPN backup trips. Final stage of the job was just to disable the rock off settings on the steam turbine control system and GT control system.